This is a pirate version of our normal video. More on that later in the episode. Somebody's used up all the hot water. I've got cold water to wash up in. This is the sort of chaos it's been for the last couple of days. We've had guests aboard, you see. And we've had landlubber guests aboard, so nothing has gone to plan. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> ah, dearie me. But um, the other thing that has become apparent is that we made the right decision some years ago. We decided that we wanted what Gaynor likes to call a 246 boat. That is, two of us on all the time, four to stay for a short time, six for dinner. And we bought enough room for a boat like that. We also wanted a boat that one of us could handle if we got, one of us got knocked in the head by the boom or something else, but I'll let Gaynor talk about that. Well, one of the things um, when you are considering your boat, which I have to be honest, Beverly and I did not consider, is uh, being able to reach um, the halyard. You know, um, on Salty Lass, I can just about get on, get on tippy toes and put the halyard on. Now, one of the things um, we've been reading about in Yachtmaster and uh, just uh, reading our books is uh, what you should then do is just put it underneath a cleat. Obviously, uh, before you actually hoist the sail, you should take it off the cleat. Now, um, I will be confess, the main reason that Beverly and I are suffering um, getting the boat, to, the sail to hoist, is we are out of condition. <laughs> I can do it, I can do it. You can do it, you can do it. But we also think that the other problem is the fact that we have not cleaned the track and we have not cleaned the slugs. And although that does add uh, friction from hoisting it, where it really matters is when you're doing the drop because that friction is enough to stop the sail from dropping the way it should do. You know, so, um, so sometime or other, Beverly and I are gonna have to drop the sail down clean all those slugs and clean that track. Oh, by the way, if you see a bird flying around, that's um, uh, a bird called aspirin. <laughs> yeah, aspirin. So, uh, some <laughs> this week, Beverly and I were proper pirates going, ah! I just wish he wasn't in such an awkward position. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> there we go. You and Aspen. Aspen's <laughs> <laughs> family. Why is a bird called Aspen? <laughs> well, there used to be more, but apparently the parrots eat them all. <laughs> Any comments? No. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Dim boy. <laughs> Those colours are beautiful in the camera. Now, when you're going to have guests aboard, it does raise the question how big a boat should you buy? Particularly if you're expecting to have a lot of guests aboard. We know of one couple who were previously in different marriages and they then bought a boat together and they had lots of kids and the kids had all married and had lots of partners. So they bought a boat that everybody could all be aboard at, at the same time in comfort. What a great idea. And as they said to me, no, it wasn't. <laughs> it was a terrible idea. <laughs> most of the boat is empty most of the time because most of the time there's nobody on the boat except the two people who own it. There is not like 14 people aboard on a regular basis. And this is where we come back to our 246 rule. rule. How big a boat should you buy? We want four people to be comfortable for a reasonable period of time. Like say maybe three, four, five days, maybe a week tops. And after that, we'd like them to start getting a bit uncomfortable. We don't want them to stay for a month. We'd like them to come, enjoy themselves and leave. You know, um, we're not running a hotel here. This is not, a, um, this is not our sort of come and bed and breakfast service. You come for a bit, you stay for a bit, you have a great time, off you go. And then we get back to having to tidy up the mess. But um, washing in cold water, by the way, is no fun. I'll just tell you that. And we're going to pretend that it's hot water because it's TV and you can't tell. But um, 
Another thing about the size of the boat you have is if you do buy a bigger boat to accommodate these guests you've also got to bear in mind that the costs of running a boat don't go up in a linear fashion. If you double the size of the boat you don't double the costs of running the boat. You more sort of like put the factor up by about a factor of eight. It's like the cube of the size of the boat. And then there's the other thing. Marines charge by length. If you have a bigger boat they're going to charge more. There's still only two of you on board but you're paying four times the price if you have a bigger boat. You know like four times the size of this one. And we know people who have done. So that's a number of considerations that you just might want to take into account when you're thinking of your boat. How big a boat should I buy? Don't buy one that will accommodate the maximum number of guests for the maximum length of time in the maximum amount of comfort. Because mostly what you're buying is large bills in marinas, large repair bills, large running costs and you'll have a largely empty boat. That's just the way it goes. There's a lot of large factors in there. If you like going large maybe it's the way to go. Well um, we've talked already about um, what we think is an ideal configuration for us which was uh, 246 which is two to live, four to stay and six for dinner. But um, there is a number I have completely and utterly forgotten and that is the one to handle. We wanted a boat that I could handle on my own or you could handle on your own. Mm -hmm. There was yeah. a time you did get yourself knocked in the head. Yeah, I, 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 and I was completely senseless for only about half an hour, mm -hmm. but I was senseless. If it had been anything worse, Beverly would have had to deal with everything on her own for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. There was a day I wasn't particularly um, in great form coming out of Baltimore and you more or less sealed the boat in your own. I had to because, um, you know, all I did was keep Beverly upstairs because being downstairs you can get a little bit nauseous. and. Oh, I wasn't seasick. I was having a bit of a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> She was having a panic attack, but even so, I think um, if you are having a panic attack, being inside, um, I just don't think that's a great place, unless, you, of course, it's the opposite way. You know, you're agro... agropho is it, is it... There's agrophobia and there's... Um, claustrophobia. Claustrophobia. Would be the other one. Yeah. Admittedly, we haven't done any solo sailing, but I've always had that in my mind. It's an emergency measure. It is, because... You know, you might have to do it. Uh, at some point or other, I might have to practice a bit more solo sailing, but let's not worry about it just yet. But practicing sailing does bring something else to mind. And that is, if we go back a couple of years, we had a lot of coverage on the channel about getting ready to do our Yacht Master. And then COVID happened. And like a lot of things that COVID disrupted, the Yacht Master just never came back. It's like, no, re it's like restaurants used to go to, they're just gone out of business. Yeah, we started doing it and then we just sort of like got fizzled locked down, out. Got and, locked down for two years. And, and we didn't fizzle down, we got locked down for two years. Exactly. And then after that, I just wanted to sail. Let's just get out there and just do it rather than worrying about theory and stuff like that. in the summertime mm. so anyway the other day somebody said to me you know we're stuck here in port we're running around doing things uh, we're looking after my mum we're doing jobs things like that and on the days we can go out sailing it's usually howling gales yeah like this week it was absolutely horrendous it was throwing it down and it was thrown down this morning. It was four seven when I woke up. <laughs> exactly. Now this fellow's next door trying to fix their mast and seal and things. So it's not too bad at the minute. But it does bring something to mind because Gaynor said, why don't we restart the Yacht Master? And my response was, why? I mean, if we look up the book, the Yacht Master book and say, why do the Yacht Master? It says absolutely Opening. nothing. It doesn't, does it? It says it does not answer that fundamental question. Oh. You were. <laughs> that was pretty serious, wasn't it? <laughs> Hang on a second, let me check. Okay, it's from Google and it says you should do the Yacht Master because it is an advanced course for navigation and meteorology. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> And if you believe that, I've got a bridge that I need to sell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
on you. Oh, dear. As, so some, we... as somebody who has actually sold a rusty kettle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ah, uh, dearie me. Where so, is the darn thing? Where's it gone? What? This. Oh, the Upmaster book. Hey! <laughs> so, even though what we've decided to do is the theory course, rather than the practical course, for me, what it will mean is we have an aim. We have a goal. Theory course, 400 quid per person. Book, 40 quid. Yeah, so, but I am still a kinesthetic learner. That means I learn by doing. I thought it means you know everything there is to know about kinesthetic. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I learn by doing. I'm not a great book reader. Bob is a fantastic book reader. Mm -hmm. I am rubbish at reading books. Um, so I am going to have to learn uh, kinesthetically. And uh, while we're doing it, uh, we thought it'd be great to video it, so at least we have a purpose. Mm -hmm. I I just feel as if at the moment, with going to work, coming back from work, going to your mum, sorting out that, mm -hmm. um, we're just adrift. We're not adrift. We don't have two minutes left to spare. We're not, <laughs> we're not adrift. We're, we're the exact opposite of adrift. We're nailed to the spot. We are nailed to the spot. It's like somebody's put a bolt through the keel and attached it to the marina. Yeah. So... We have managed to get one day for ourselves uh, because yeah, we have three days off together, of two of which is your mother. Two, um, one day is for us, and there's a 50 50 chance that they'll be high and kill. Yeah. So, you know, it's just hard. It so, is. So, at it's, least it, by doing the theory, this is the plan. We had a lousy summer last year. Um, I mean, like, we typically got like two. Two, two days sailing with three days bad weather and sort of like you had to take the gaps when you got them. Yeah. This 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 summer feels very much the same. It does. And the problem is because we're working, the days that are nice, um, we're not, I'm at work or you're at work or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, but you sail, know. Sailing can't happen. Like I, so, I, I worked, I'm working Friday this week. So I've got the rest of the week off. You're working every day this week except Friday. No, I am actually working Friday. Oh my God, you're working Friday as well. <laughs> yes. I'm working, working every day. Yeah. So things like that are going on. So, you know, it's it, it, it's not brilliant. So what we decided to do is we're going to refocus on this. Now, as far as I can see, um, this really just recovers everything we've ever done on Day Skipper. Except yeah. it adds more meteorology. Um, the navigation... Do you know what? There's some parts of the navigation which I've never done. Some uh, parts of the navigation uh, I don't think you're ever going to do, but that's different. Yes, but I'm going to try. I'm uh -huh. going to try and do it. Uh huh. Um, so we've got this, but I'd like to say meteorology and navigation seems to be the two big differences and call regs, a big emphasis on call regs. Mm. Yeah. Um, so we we're just going to refocus on this and, you know, hopefully you will come along um with our journey as we uh battle through it and try and explain it because please please give us hope <laughs> because doing exams and things like that it sucks the life out of me i hated exams when i was at school when i when i finished school i walked out the school gates and i've never walked back in them since i couldn't wait to be out of the place here's somebody who's got a degree for goodness sake so she did get sucked back in yeah but that wasn't school I know it's not school, but it's just... School didn't let you go to the pub at lunchtime. <laughs> and uni, you sometimes didn't come back from the pub at lunchtime. Ah, oh, dear. Bearing in mind that Beverly at the time was a teetotaler. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you now, a burger and a pint of watery in the basement bar it was the thing to have. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to do some... Yacht mastery things, and if we get out there, we're also going to do some yacht mastery practicy things out there, aren't we? As well as sailing and trying to enjoy ourselves. Because the nice thing about it is, we don't have to go ten miles offshore. We can just do it out there. Yes, but the thing is, what we're trying to do is we're trying to focus what we're doing, and we're rather than being rudderless, which is where we feel like we are at the moment, we're going to try and get a purpose. Okay. Battery update. Hey! They work. <laughs> well, I do. 
We still suspect the fridge might be knackered, but that's for a different day. Uh, when we rode the other day, what was I complaining about? Oh, I was complaining about I thought the engine was a bit underpowered, that maybe the prop needs a clean or that exhaust elbow's finally met its end. Yeah. So, you know, that may be exciting new things coming up in our future. Let's hope not. <laughs> I was going to say, when is maintenance exciting? When you're working five days a week and cooking for the remaining two. <laughs> yeah. So, um, guess what I've got to do today? I've got to take the exhaust off. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> but this is only because it's just got to the stage now. Obviously, we've got to go over two days a week, whereas at the beginning it was only one day a week. Now it's two days a week. And now we're doing cooking. Now we're doing cooking as well. Yay! Yeah. So it is what it is, and we're just going to carry on. Yep. And well, well done on getting to the end of this. Congratulations. Give yourself a cup of coffee and a large chocolate. Well done. We will not be sending out cups of coffee and large chocolate because we can't afford to do that. Because if we did do that, we'd have to work even more and we wouldn't have time for the videos. So thank you for watching.